see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. We want to give TikTok a chance to come on in here. This is yours truly, Word on the Street with the Minister M.L. Kimball coming to you live. Um, obviously, we've got to update you all with what we are doing to solve the issue of what transpired in Swanton, Ohio. Today, I'm going to be a lot more calmer than I have been when I have come came to you guys before. Um, I've been a little bit emotional about this because the more I think about the blatant racism and the blatant mistreatment that I experienced at the hands of individuals in the Swanton, Ohio area, uh, especially when now I can look at a situation and I can tell you right now, um, I have to put some suspects involved with McNeil uh, because we had a serious issue um, happen. Now, I'm going to give you guys that do not know why I'm going live as much and why we are putting out as much information as possible is because I want the public to understand exactly what happened. Okay. This is not about uh, revenge. This is not about attack. This is about what truly transpired and happened at the hands of someone, individuals, whoever involved in the Swanton, Ohio area. Now, this is about my 50th time talking about this. So I'm going to go ahead and go back through it in detail, no matter how much I'm tired of speaking on it, because everybody needs to understand what actually transpired. So what I want to do is I want to give you guys a backstory of who I am and where do I fall in place of all of this. I want you guys to understand that back in 2010, I was offered a position at the McNeil Chevrolet dealership located in Swanton, Ohio. They brought me in the door as the finance manager, and I did not come in as a salesman. I walked in the door on the management team so to speak. Uh, when I came in the door at McNeil Chevrolet, uh, I started off first year, I think I made about $60,000. Then every year it went up ten to $15,000. By the final year that I was employed there, uh, it had dropped tremendously and I'm going to get to why it dropped. But we've got to talk about my heyday at this dealership. So I was employed at McNeil Chevrolet for the years, between the years of 2010, 2018. When my grandmother passed away shortly after that, I resigned my position at the dealership for some reasons that we will get to. Um, but we're going to talk about this as a whole because you guys have to understand, at one point, I thought these people were people that I could trust. I thought they were my friends. I thought they were people that really cared about me, gave a damn about me, so to speak. But now that I look at the whole picture, I see where I actually fit uh, when it comes down to uh, the dealership of McNeil Chevrolet. So as this time went on, it got to the place where I made $138,000 a year. Guys, I'm telling you right now, you take a guy at the age of, at that time, I was in my early 30s. Um, you know, uh, it took my family into a whole different lifestyle that a lot of people my age never got to experience. I mean, when I see you take a person from without uh, much, uh, you know, all I had was a high school diploma and I had a lot of management experience, but I did not have any experience in the car industry. So for them to take a chance on me um, and give me that kind of a salary, they didn't give me anything. Let's start there. They gave me a pay uh, schedule, a pay uh, grid that I had to obtain certain levels to make X amount of dollars. So it was not just where here, here you go. It was, you must do this, this, and this, and we'll pay you this, this, and this. And I exceeded that each time. So it got me to the place where out of the dealership group, I was the top finance manager. So you understand there was a dealership group, about three or four big dealerships, and out of the three dealerships, every single month, I became the top finance manager. So it was a thing to where every month we'd have a review. And I, I take that back, not every month, but, you know, most of the months out of the year, 
when it came down to the review. I always won the gift card. I always was the guy. And I was the only black finance manager out of the group of these finance managers. What I will tell you is what I tolerated silently at that dealership. Now, this would have never been exposed had they not done what they did to me, which I'll get to shortly. But let's just talk about what I took as a, as a finance manager. Now, these are true statements. I've got evidence, and I'm going to show you a piece of the evidence just right now because the rest of the evidence doesn't need to be uh, shown until we go to court because I'm done playing with these guys. Um, somebody robbed my business. Somebody destroyed my business. And at this point, I've got speculation that it has something to do with, with McNeil Chevrolet. I'm sorry. And the reality is, State Farm, you will be held accountable because that shows proof that you did not do a full investigation like you claim you did. Because if you did, you should have investigated the dealership that I worked at for seven years as the finance manager. This, this whole town knew exactly who I was because everybody in the town of Swanton, most of them that bought new cars, they bought them from McNeil's. So understand, I might not have been known in Toledo. I might not have been known in Maumee. Perrysburg, Dayton, I don't care. I was a celebrity in the town of Swan. You understand. People not only knew that I was the finance manager, but people also knew that this is the only black guy in, 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 in Swanton, essentially. There was only one other one at the other time when I was working in Swanton at that time, and I believe he worked at the post office. Now, I could be wrong, but when it came down to the black guy in the town of Swanton, I became known as the finance manager at McNeil's that everybody began to know. I mean, it got to the place where my wife became popular as well because I had that type of a clout in this town because of McNeil's. So, but getting back to what I tolerated, working there, there were the jokes. Remember when the gorilla Harambe died? Oh, executive managers. It was a big joke for the damn dealership to call the finance manager, Harambe. Now you tell me that's something that I, I, you know, I would tell my friends and family about this stuff and they'd say, what in the hell, why are you taking that? Well, they're giving me a free car. They're paying me hundred grand a year. They don't give me the shirt off their back. They're not racist. No, I, could, I promise you these guys can't be racist. Bull. They called me Harambe. They called me Toby and they called me the token. And I tolerated that for seven years as the finance manager, okay? The reason this is being exposed because I want you to understand the law that was broken in the last two weeks and it has, still hasn't been addressed. Still hasn't been addressed. And I, I don't understand for the life of me why. No, I know why it wasn't addressed. Because I can tell you right now, if I pulled some of the stuff that just happened in the last two weeks, it would have been addressed. Okay? So the reality of it is 2018 comes around. My grandmother passes away. The dealership knows at this point, I, I'm done with this crap. I don't want to do it anymore. I don't care how much money you offer me. I'm doing credit repair. I've got my own office. I've got my own clients. Every time I bring somebody out here, you can't get them approved anyway. So I'm going to go full time and do my own thing. I threatened to quit the dealership. When I threatened to quit the dealership, this is what they did. They came back with everything they could to keep me there. They offered me a position. And the position that they offered me was you come on into this dealership, stay here, we'll get, keep, let you keep your own office. You can keep your own office. You can, um, excuse me, you can keep your own office. You can, uh, you know, we'll, we'll let you still work here part time. You come in whenever you got a client of yours that you fix their credit. You bring them in. We won't change your salary. OK, you work as like the subprime manager. We'll get extra banks in here to get people approved. We'll get cars on the lot. None of that happened. But I brought the customers out. I've got the proof. OK, I brought African-American customers out because that was all I knew in Toledo. I'm sorry. They were not in Swanton. In fact, every time a white person salesman brought out, got an African-American, they always wanted me to come out and show my face. Now, you tell me what kind of an environment this is, okay? I don't have to sit here and play games with these people anymore. They played games with me, and somebody robbed me. Somebody vandalized me, and somebody stole from me and then implicated me to be the criminal. That's not going to fly. Not when I'm a damn notary, 
not when I am a registered minister, and not when I've never had a crime in my life. You don't get to put that on me. State Farm, McNeil's, I don't care who it was, Swanton P. Police Department, Mc, the mayor, Neil, no, all, you, all of you bastards. Somebody is responsible for this. So now at the end of the day, I decide, okay, I'll stay. You're going to do that for me? I'll do that for you. Well, then some kind of way the word got out to all the rest of the salesmen that I was still making the same money. I wasn't working the hours they were working. I didn't have to clean off the lot like they did. And nobody ever vouched for me from the management side to tell them what they decided to do with me. They didn't want to piss off their veteran salesmen. So they made this secret change with me, but never told them. You know what kind of a way that pissed off the salesman when they found out that I was, this is what was going on. So they complained, they threatened to quit. They complained, they threatened to quit to the point where this guy decides out of nowhere, he's going to change everybody's pay and make it all match the same, no matter what. Well, what that did to Marquise Kimball was he had to suffer making $150 a week for six months because nobody could get me approved on my customers. I'd bring the customers out. They didn't have the banks. They didn't have the cars. The customers either were forced to get into cars that I could not put them in, or they had to bring cars back every five minutes because something was wrong. That's what the African-American sales went through at, at McNeil Chevrolet. I know I signed the damn deal, so they can't sit in beer and try to even have an argument. This is a bad situation. So I tolerated that for six months trying to support my family. We lost cars and repossession. The whole, the whole my finances was, was just completely torn up. But to be loyal to that dealership, I took it. Although I took all that racist bullshit, all that stuff that they did, they changed my pay without my knowledge. And then I still put up with it for six months. I quit. I finally decided this is it. I'm done with this crap. One day I walk in and the next day I walk out. But that wasn't the end of Marquis Kimball. See, I've been a business owner and I got into the CBD industry and I had started my own CBD distribution company, wholesale and retail company with retail customers. And the best place for me to go to open up would be where I was known at and all the people I knew. So I knew the mayor through McNeil's. I knew this person through McNeil's and I got an opportunity to open up my business downtown Swatton right away, right after about six, about a year after I left McNeil's. I opened my first location. We move into a building. The guy was a complete racist jackass by the name of Mike Wales. I mean, this guy was so ridiculous that imagine having a business open that the bathroom lights shut off at six o'clock, regardless if you're in there or not, and you can't control it, but you're paying this guy rent. We go into this ridiculous piece of coal of a building that he only has a very small building. We completely gut it and remodel it from the ground up. Me, my wife, and my brother-in-law. We make this thing beautiful inside. The only thing we do on the outside is we put uh, a, 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 a vinyl sign on the outside of the, the building that displays the name of our our, 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 our our store. But the inside, my wife made beautiful. You understand me? That was my wife that made the, both of these stores look the way they did. I give all the credit to my wife. You understand me? My wife was in there, hands and knees, making this place look like I wanted to believe. So I'm more upset the fact that you guys don't even care about what you put my family through. Forget me. Let's separate Marquis Kimball. What did you put my damn family through that you claimed you cared about? Oh, this is not going to go easy for you, McNeils. And I'm serious. And so we open up this first building with this racist bastard called Mike Wales. I'll tell you that in the first three months, we started having leaking problems to the point we would walk into our new building that my wife had just remodeled, making look beautiful with me. And there would be puddles of water all over this building to the point where I as an owner cannot have customers coming in here. I had to shut the damn store down because he would not fix this problem. When we told him about the problem, he blamed it on our vinyl sign that was on the front of the building. 
These puddles were all through the back of the store. Uh-huh. We were renting. So how in the world are we even legally responsible? Even if it is a leak, how are we legally responsible if we have a rental contract with you, you bastard? Do you think we're stupid? I had a guy come up and look at the top of the roof, and you know that the guy was putting holes, covering up holes for years just with plaster upon plaster upon plaster upon plaster. He was never fixing the issue. I made it public to the Swanton community, and within six months, we had a new building offered thrown at us. Now, this building had a business already in it. The lady that sold me the building never told the lady that it was in the build business. So when it's time for us to get the building, we're coming in here, and this lady does not know that I'm here to replace you because the lady just sold this whole entire building to me, online contract. What do you mean? So this lady finds this out. We already going into the community looking bad. Like we pushed out a business that was there for 50 years because the owner never explained what was happening to the previous tenant. So I want you to understand the, this condition we had to go through just getting open. We get this building open and once again, my beautiful wife is in there busting her ass to make this place beautiful every damn day. Because if you think I was doing the work, you're out of your mind. I was walking around pointing orders, telling them what to do. And it was my wife that was busting her ass. You're not getting away with that. Whoever did it is going to be held accountable. And at this point, I don't know if McNeil's had any, didn't have anything to do with it. Why? Because they chose to call me impersonating the Swanton Police Department. Now you tell me where in the hell is that legal at? Where can you get away with that at? How is that possible? Who said in what constitution is it where you can impersonate law enforcement and nothing happens to you? If I did that, I'm in cuffs, I've got a record, and then I'm going to be imposed monetary fines that I can't even imagine. But yet, that's what McNeil's did to me. They know I'm in the middle of fighting out what happened to my store. So we open up a store, and for eight months, we bring in over $138,000 in sales. I got the evidence. Me, my wife, and my sister. Huh? That's what we were doing. That's exactly what happens. We bring in that amount of sales in the matter of eight months. Then on the morning of June 17th, 2022, Somehow, some way, there's a disturbance at the store. My alarms go off at 645. And the Swan Police Department, which is three minutes walking distance from my store, shows up at 715. Now, you want to tell me how that's possible? We're next door to the, the biggest pizza place in downtown, and we're downtown Swanton. And yet y'all find a way to come show up an hour late and not only show up late, you take your asses to the old store where everybody in town knows that we moved. We lit up the whole downtown area. When you went downtown, you saw our store as soon as it got dark. We busted our butts remodeling this place from ground up, completely gutting it and bringing in our own stuff. We had over a hundred five-star Google ratings in the matter of eight months from that community. The damn physical therapist was sending their referrals to our store. The mayor cut the ribbon with us and it was in the paper, me and my wife and this mayor. I was known in this town and so was my business. I was involved in every single community thing I could get involved in. When they had the Halloween hoopla, they used our electricity to power the stupid blow up things in the street. But yet, when this alarm goes off, I get to the store at eight o'clock and the police immediately treat me like a criminal. Of course, I get fingerprinted on the spot, told to come to the police station, interrogated at the police station, and, they're to, and they tell me they're trying to get me to implicate my own sister had something to do with this crime. How in the hell would we even know you bastards were going to be late, over an hour late? How? How? Somebody explain that to me like I'm a two-year-old. But yet, they dropped the case as soon as I retained 
an illegal council. That's what the Swanton Police Department does. I can contact the mayor, their boss. I tell him how bad the situation was. I've got the receipts. He says, "We're oh my goodness, I'm so sad that this happened to you. I hope you get open back up and yada, yada, yada. We're going to call in another police department to help investigate your claim. He never did it because they dropped it. Mayor Neil Tope, you're a scam. You lied to me. I don't care. I don't live in your community. I hope your community knows what, what you do to African-Americans because you lied. You absolutely lied because you dropped the case and nobody was found if, if guilty of this. Two years I'm fighting State Farm. State Farm comes in and says, we're going to investigate you, Mr. Kimball, seven days after the incident. I know we're on the scene. It's proven I'm at home in bed, but y'all want to investigate me. Takes a whole year to then deny the claim. I get attorneys and we go back to court and somehow they weasel out of us going to court. And I've got to refile file the whole case all over again. Meanwhile, McNeil's calls me impersonating the police. Just, are you kidding me? And if you don't think I tolerated racist bullshit when I worked there, you think I'm making it up, let's take a look at his birthday card again. Because I want you to understand what I put up with to be the finance manager at that dealership. They want to sit here and play games with me. I'm done with it. I tolerated all of that garbage. And you know what? You had no right to call me acting like the same police department that neglected me, interrogated me, and treated me like I was a criminal. This is a birthday card that the dealership gave me one year for my birthday. You think it's cute. Here's the issue. It's a little black boy on a birthday card in front of a Chevy GM car. You know what's wrong with it? Everybody on the inside that signed this card was Caucasian. Now, you want to sit here like I'm a two-year-old and tell me this is not a joke? Yes, I'm going to talk every day until they tell me I've got to be quiet. This is the racist bullshit that Marquise Kimball tolerated working at McNeil Chevrolet. And every single day, they're gonna get, this is gonna come right back into their face. And then State Farm's attorney comes along and says, he showed up to court with a suit, with a loud tie, with a bunch of jewelry on, and was very braggadocious and put that in court documents. And you wanna tell me once again that they were not being racist. You tell me, let's talk about it. What were you trying to say? Because if you go back 20 years and look up Marquise Kimball, I've always dressed the same. I didn't have on no more jewelry than what you see I got on today. My wedding ring, my watch, and they couldn't even see my damn necklace because I had a tie on. But they can say that in paper, State Farm. I have an indictment towards you. McNeil, you have an indictment. And yes, LaRich, I'm calling your name because I know you own Motors, most of the dealership, percentage-wise. General Motors, you are being called because this is a General Motors dealership. And if this is what you allow at your dealerships, you will be held accountable. I wasn't going to say anything until I was harassed by a GM dealership impersonating the same damn racist police department that mistreated me and my family. And now I'm supposed to believe that they didn't have anything to do with the vandalism of my company. Are you kidding me? No way. So this is the update. You want any more questions about it? I This is the truth. I don't care what type of damn they want to cook up, how they want to twist it, how they want to turn it. This is what happened to me and my family in Swanton, Ohio, downtown Swanton, Ohio, to be exact. The mayor's office is three minutes from here. My insurance agent, six minutes from here. McNeil's, 
seven minutes from here. Everybody's in the circle here and nobody could help me when my business was vandalized. McNeil's didn't even stand up and defend me. I was your finance manager for seven years. Where were you? You know what they told me? We're hearing through the grapevine, you have a lawsuit against the police. And if you do, we have to disconnect ourselves with you. That don't sound like somebody who gives a damn about you or your family. So at the end of the day, I have already put it all to the public. And I know that the Constitution gives me the right every day, freedom of speech. You don't like me telling the truth, then you better answer my request. Because I'm not making up no slander. I'm not making up anything. I'm the one with the evidence. I'm walking evidence. You don't want to believe me? Let's go pull 10 years of the last African-American car sales signed up at McNeil's. And let's look at the differences. You don't want to believe me? When Obama was the president, how many jokes did I take? I took it because I had to support and raise my family. And I did a damn good job. And you know, you're not going to rob that from me. I got kids and grandkids, a wife, a whole family. And you think that I'm just going to lay down and let this go. Somebody will be held accountable. I don't care who it is. It looks like every one of y'all in cahoots at this point. How in the hell is the police late? And how can he call me and act like the police? And nothing be done about it. Don't give me that garbage. I'm not here for your stupid mooka wooka. You bastards robbed my life from me and my family. And I had insurance. I've never had a crime charged on me in my life. But yet you implicated that I had something to do with the break into my own business as if I somehow had some magical knowledge to knowing that you bastards were going to be late an hour responding to my store. Let me tell you what they did. They broke in. They wrote nigger all on the walls. They peed all on stuff. They stole stuff. And what was left, they did it again under the same police's watch. And nothing happened. Everything in my store, I've got pictures of what was left in there after the robbery. And all of that stuff was taken a second time. And nothing was done. I walked away with my business completely robbed from me. And I had full insurance as a business owner. I knew the community. I was there hand in hand with the community. And instead of people standing up in my defense, they all got quiet, separated from me, and allowed everyone that wanted to say I had something to do with it, say that. And now, two weeks ago, McNeil Chevrolet General Motors dealership calls me on the phone, you got the video evidence, acting like the police. Somebody gonna have to pay for that. I ain't your dummy. I ain't your fool. And if I break the law like that, they got me like this. And not only are they gonna take me like this, I'm gonna have a record on that ass. And then not only am I gonna have a record, I'm gonna get smacked with some fines. You didn't wrong anybody here besides Marquis Kimball. And I'm upset about it. And somebody is going to be responsible for what my business would have brought in. At the end of the day, that's all I got to say today. This is your update. Word on the street. I'm the Minister ML Kimball. Be blessed on purpose.